All right, what is going on you guys? It's James from James Chef House. Today, all the baby scorpions came off of the mother. I'm gonna call this female one and the other one will be female two. Just cause this is the one I had the babies, it's gonna be female one. Just checked a second ago and there was still one baby on and I checked right now and it's off. So all the babies are off. There are, it looks like two that didn't make it and there's one from yesterday that didn't make it. Maybe three. Maybe four total. Um, but when you're having 20 babies, that's kind of expected. Um, so the plan for today, I have to cut the rest of the babies. I have to feed my crested geckos. And first off, I want to talk about the, rap the, the reptile show. The coming up Sacramento reptile show. Um, I will be there. I will be under Glenn's name, wearing Glenn's merch. I will be selling some of my own stuff. I'll also be working with his animals, answering questions, doing all sorts of fun stuff. I'll do a lap around. I'm gonna do a lap before the show starts. Um, I'm gonna try to film. I get a little nervous um, filming in public. Uh, 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 uh. As far as snakes go, I fed everything Saturday. I'm not gonna feed it this week. Everything can take a week off. It can pass anything else. Um, that'll work perfectly for Saturday, Sunday. Everything should have already used the bathroom. It should all be out of their system, hopefully. And I will pick back up next Saturday where I'm also, also, also with my geckos, I will feed them Friday night and I'll bring them and them I'm not too worried about. I'm just gonna bring paper towel and my cleaning sprays. And if they poop, I'll wipe them out. Uh, snake poops tends to be a little bit messier have a little trash can there. I always bring my little trash can. For the terrestrial ge geckos, the two leopards that I'm bringing, well, I might bring two more than two, but a couple of leopards I'm bringing, and for the fat tails, if I do decide to bring any, I will hand feed them dubia roaches, maybe tomorrow. And that's another thing. So that's it for show prep, really. I'm just gonna cup everything Friday night and or Saturday morning, depending on how I feel depending on what the animal is. I'll probably cup crest it's the morning of and everything else Friday, just because crests are a little bit more delicate. Um, this week, Wednesday, Thursday, I work my other job, my, my second job besides Glenn's and besides my first job. This is going to be the last week I'm working there. These are the last two days I'm working there. So normally on a normal week, I put out six videos a week, almost every day. I'm putting out content, I'm, I'm getting the grind, I'm, showing you guys my animals, I'm teaching about animals, I'm learning stuff about my animals, myself, behaviors and whatnot and all that. Um, this week, well not this week, this week, I won't, there won't be a video tomorrow, just like every week. But next week, it'll be seven days a week. It'll be content, video every day. I uh, usually post by 11 o'clock at night and then you can watch it when you wake up in the morning, depending on what time zone you're in. I'm in California, which is Pacific Standard Time. If I, there's so many times that I don't even know. I'm pretty sure it's Pacific Standard. But if you want consistency, you got it. I'm gonna show you my animals. I got a lot of stuff going on. I'm working on figuring out if this one species is illegal or not. If it's not, if they, if they just made it illegal, like I was told, then I'll probably be the first person in North America that'll have videos of it. And that'll be really awesome. It'll be amazing to see that happen. Um, hopefully that animal works out. I've had not, I've not had success with this species in the past. I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm not going to go into any details. But I've got tons of hissing cockroaches I want to bring to the show. I just looked at it. There's tons of babies. I started my colony with 11 adults, and I've probably got 30 or 40 adults. Uh, the super worms, I'm not sure what I want to do with them. I kind of want to get rid of them, and I'm going, I'm going to. I just decided right now I'm going to. I'm going to grow everything up and feed it off as it gets big. So nothing will be turned into beetles after this. Or I'll wait till the end of the reptile show, whatever. And then upcoming November 12th, which is a Saturday, the second Saturday in November, will be the Chico reptile show. That booth is locked in, it's a corner booth, it's two tables, it's my name. Mondo will be there, Trent will be there, Miller will probably be there. It's kind of up in the air. Um, I told them they can come. I have to work out the details, but I'm gonna charge them a little bit of money. Mondo will, 
probably end up giving me 40 bucks. That's just kind of the way it is. You know, you pay, I paid for the space. If I knew, if I was gonna do it myself, I would have only bought one table because I don't have a lot. And I'm working on a couple decorations because it's, I'm not really gonna bring anything to the sag show except deli cups. Um, but for the Chico show, I would like, you know, little signs that have my Instagram, my Twitter, my YouTube, my Facebook, um, all sorts of stuff, my email. Um, it's undecided, I have a label maker. I really should start printing labels today because I always print them, realize I wanna add or change something and then reprint them. The label tape's not really expensive, it's just you have to buy it in bulk and you save like 50% when you buy it in bulk. Uh, so it's not really expensive, I burn through it quite a bit. But that's it for today. I'm gonna get these scorpions separated and I'll go through my fat tails with you and I'll show you which ones I'm probably gonna bring and why and that'll wrap it up. All right, so you can see right here, I pulled 16 babies. Um, she still has one more on her back. I think there was a total of five that didn't make it. Which is kind of a high percentage, kind of upsetting, but that was her first time breeding and with a lot of animals, the first time breeding is probably not the most fertile. So I have two females. I'm going to keep randomly selecting no, these four. I'm going to keep these four. These four are going to be my grow ups. I'm going to keep them um, in the super worm rack where I used to keep super worms. That's perfect. That works really well, actually, as long as I don't forget they're there. Uh, so I'll bring a couple of these to the Sacramento show. Maybe, maybe six of the 12. Yeah, maybe six of the 12. And we'll see how that goes. We'll see if anyone's interested. If anyone's triggered that I'm selling scorpions fresh off the mom's back, I don't know. We'll see. And I gotta buy a male. I gotta buy a male so I can get those females going again. Um, I'll probably give them two weeks, a month off, and then introduce a male and see what happens. So, other than that, I gotta feed my crested geckos, and I'm gonna do that later tonight because I'm going to show you the fat tails, just like I promised. All right, so in this first box, we have Pearl, Caution, and Diamond. These are fat tails. All three of these are ones I produced from my original couple females, the original trio. I believe Johnson is in here too, my newer male. Sorry, not even looking at the right spot. No one's ever under the side. They just poop under it. But there you go. That's going to be Caution right there. I can just tell by how big she is. That's Johnson the male, he's tiny. I tried to separate him. I put him up in this top one, he was here, Black Knight was here, a little makeshift cardboard divider. And he got in with the Black Knight and he bit the Black Knight's tail, so they can't be together. Hopefully after the show, I'll have tons of room for my geckos to be separated though. And you can see right there, that spike at the end of the tail is usually a het patternless marker, so I'm kind of hoping that she's head patternless, or at least a couple of my females are. This one's got some nice pattern. No, she's caution. She's pearl? That's pearl got really big. All right. So, what I'll probably end up taking, I'll probably, I'm just checking her out. She got a little bit of underbite, you can see right there. And this girl, uh, they're probably both not going to be ready this year. She's got less underbite, but she does have a regen, which means I can't see her tail, which is kind of disappointing. I'm really particular about tail kinks. I almost didn't buy the Black Knight because it has a, just a tiny little tail kink in it. Um, Patty, of course I'm gonna breed Patty this year. She's my big, uh, big girl slash producer. This one is Pixel, I produced her. I call her Pixel and I think she's head patternless. Well, one, she's got the that little mark right there. Her color's fading. She's got pixelation on her pattern. Uh, very little underbite on her. And maybe a tiny tail kink. It's really hard to tell. If I was going to take any of them to the show, I would take this girl right here. She's A1. 
or steak sauce. She's steak sauce. A1 was the male. But I probably won't. So this girl is the girl I'm pretty sure was producing uh, all slugs this last year. And she's just, she's in bad shape. She's never, she breeds herself really hard and she gets really skinny. I, I thought for sure she was going to die this last year, but here she is. She's thick again. So I'm not sure. Uh, she never really looks good enough. You can see Patty's super interested in her for some reason. She never really looks good enough to breed or to want to sell or to take to a show. So I'm not really sure. She might end up just living her life out here in one of the racks. Uh, so what I'll probably end up doing, so I have three fat tails I'll breed this year. Four if you count caution. I'll keep her. And I'll sell this one, Pearl. So Pearl was the first one. This must be Diamond. Come here. So I'll end up selling Diamond. Gosh dang it. Gosh dang it. All right. So I'll keep Pearl. I'll probably end up taking Diamond with me. She does have the stripe. Pearl doesn't. I had to check because I couldn't remember. Um, the stripe is one of my favorite traits, and hers is really nice, but eh, it's not really worth it to me. These geckos probably I won't be keeping half of the breeder females next year because I'll raise up either patternless, patternless whiteouts, or whiteout head patternless. Basically, anything that comes out patternless whiteout females, I'll probably keep. And then if I don't get any, if I don't get enough or what have you, if I just want to mix up the genetics, everything will be het patternless, if not a visual. So any whiteout het patternless girls that are really strong and, you know, are, are, are good genetics behind them, I will keep. And I'll sell the male after the breeding season and buy like a uh, patternless... Well, if I keep all females, I don't need to buy a whiteout. But then at that point, I'm not getting the money from selling the whiteouts. I'll probably end up keeping the whiteouts. I think I can save more on the mail next year than I can make from the babies in half a year. If that makes sense, it makes sense to me. Um, so next year, I'll get a maybe a patternless Oreo. And then I'll have patternless whiteout head Oreos. And then the year after that, I will have patternless whiteout Oreo head Zulus or something like that. Whiteout, did I say whiteout? Patternless Zulu. What else is there? There's ghosts, which you don't want visual ghost females because they tend not to breed. Um, there are some that I've heard that do, but a lot don't. Um, caramels. Amels, there's a lot. There's a lot that I can throw in there. Um, and if I get two, if I get a male patternless, like Oreo, Amel or something like that, that's two heads all the babies will be. It's confusing. It works out for me. I understand it. And every year as we get a step closer, it's kind of less to remember because they'll have all those genes in them. And I'll be closer to breeding those real expensive geckos that I want. I want everything to be expensive. I want to make a lot of money. I don't want to sell them very often. It'll be good. It'll be real fun. One thing I... Let me turn you around. One thing I really want to do is once I start making money on my own and I, maybe I can quit my, my day job and just breed animals and make videos, um, I want to do really expensive geckos and just sell them for super cheap. You know, maybe a new morph comes out and it's a grand, I could sell it for a hundred bucks. You know, once I have a, a breeding pair and I can sell a couple, make a little bit of money, just kill the market. Uh, I understand there's a lot of money to be made in morphs and I'm doing that myself right now. But at the same time, I don't like that there's a lot of money in morphs and I just want to kill that. I want. You know, we can we can get rid of that entirely. Uh, I can get to the point where maybe I have four females producing, and I'll sell you know the first five babies at regular price, and then after that, 
I'll just take them to shows and flip them for super cheap. Uh, or and maybe I will do that and that'll get people excited for shows and they'll have to go to shows and they'll come right to my booth. Or I'll sell them online for really cheap. I don't know. It sounds really fun and it'll be a way to get rid of expensive animals. We'll see. I don't know. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Sorry the angles on the fat tails weren't super great. Um, I'll show you everything I'm bringing to the show the day of, the morning of. It'll be awesome. That video will be either really long or there will be multiple videos. So, I'm James from James Jeptiles. If you liked it, like the video. Definitely that helps the channel. Subscribe, comment, share it with someone. Uh, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, jamesjeptiles at gmail.com. Those will all be linked in the description. And have a good day. I'll see you at the Sacramento Reptile Show.